Podcast City Network. Thank you for tuning in on this episode of the Everett Lee Show. But before we get on with the guest onto the program today, there's a couple things I do want to mention that you can help out with supporting the Everett Lee Show. If you're looking to start a podcast and already have a podcast and you're looking for an affordable podcasting hosting site, Podbeam is your number one choice. Podbeam offers statistics with in-depth analytics to manage your podcast needs. Use the promo code podbeam.com slash PB sign up and get a free month off. That's podbeam.com slash PB sign up to get a free month off and see why 1,500 episodes have been shared all over the world in the past 11 years with over 3,000 subscribers that have chose Podbeam as their number one hosting site. And if you're looking to get into advertising, Podbeam advertising, you'll get a hundred dollars off advertising when you sign up as a sponsorship over on podbeam.com slash pro slash PB sign up. That's podbeam.com slash pro slash PB sign up. You're listening to the Everest Lee Show. Welcome everyone to another new exciting episode of the Everett Lee Show. I'm the Everett Lee. Today, we mix things up. Draft day. Spin the wheel edition. This was taken from a Thursday night live stream of the Everett Lee Show. Myself, independent wrestler Happy Hour, and David C. Russell of Deathmatch Russell Podcast joins me on the return of draft day spin the wheel edition something i came up with off the top of my head thinking about it david c russell has bugged me and bugged me about doing another show i love doing crazy stuff and podcast with david c russell because i never know what to expect he's so full of energy he gets so excited that sometimes he forgets where he's at but that's david man that's david if you know him personally like i do that's just who he is what you hear on his show is what he is in real life it's not an act that's who he is just someone passionate about professional wrestling happy hour i was happy (laughs) no pun intended that he decided to Say hey, I'm down. Let's let's do this. So he joins myself and David C. Russell for draft day. This right here was crazy. It gets crazy as the show goes on. We just kick back more and more as we spin the wheel and take shots and drink. And by the end of the episode, David pretty much was filling it. A little lightweight there. <laughs> I hate to say that about you, David. But you're a lightweight there. Happy. Love talking and discussing with him. We we have some discussion in the middle and just just random conversation. Just having a good time. Having some brews. You get to hear three guys kick back and have some brews. So be sure to check out the video portion of this when it's available on Podcast City Network's YouTube. And you can check out the live stream version over on Facebook. But Here's the audio portion for you audio fans. Enjoy. Coming back for a second round tonight here on the Everett Lee Show is none other than... Second round! Happy hour! <laughs> hey! Happy hour! How's Cheers it going? to the happy hour. Any round with a beer in hand is a good round. Man. <laughs> so happy. Happy. Everett, let me get into it. Well, let's, let's talk wrestling, man. We, uh... I uh, had the privilege, you know, the first time around to get this guy, Mr. Happy, on the podcast as he was entering intergenet- uh, Sizzling Stan Styles' birthday bash, Intergender Bonanza number six. And I was in attendance as well. And my God, what a night that was as Mr. Happy Hour entered the ring surprisingly in an open challenge. Wow. Open challenge. Open challenge. Tell, mm. tell me tell me about that, Happy. Tell me how, how that went down. Well, well, bottom line, it was an open challenge. I wanted to be on the Bonanza. You know, I showed up and just like, I hear, nah, nah, uh, no one's interested. And I'm like, well, open challenge? You know what? 
I am not afraid of anyone. If there's two things that happy hour loves, it is beer and it is fights. So I have a beer ready. I have the but, beer with me. But, but this guy. But I saw something. <laughs> You're always but, ready, man. So You're this, always ready with the with the beer well, and a fight, man. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. But wait a minute. But wait a minute. As as the guy was announcing, uh, his name was Christian Ross and the boss and. Uh, some hand pops out of the curtain from behind with a beer in his hand like <laughs> this sneaking through the curtain i'm like no way is that the happy hour that i we know yes it was entering the <laughs> ring oh my god the tr crowd was going nuts the crowd was in it was was on the edge of their seats because this guy just entertained us my god i actually gave him a cold beverage we me and him did a podcast beverage after show but then some fan over there what is what was that thing that that guy had what contraption man it, it, it was a beer bong with two hoses so we could socially distance and both have the beer we're basically yeah stretch out the hose he had one of the hose item beer poured in we're socially distanced and chugging beer <laughs> <laughs> actually that is that's that was my favorite moment that probably will uh never happen again the crowd was chanting, chanting social distance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You will not see that again, probably. <laughs> Dude, that's 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 nuts, man. That is nuts. I, I love that. I love that there. Now you enter in there and there in there and stuff. You you didn't win though, but you just showed up. You just happened to show up for a good time because when there's a lot of people and brew it's happy hour. Uh -huh. you know, the, the, the funny thing is, I didn't realize I didn't win until I saw the footage later. Oh, um, okay. David didn't, you know, David just didn't like, tell hey, that. I got up. I was, uh, you know, asking uh -huh. everybody, hey, I hear a bell. Did I win? And nobody really uh, fed me any info. So I see the footage later. And I was like, oh, well, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> so we did have a winner. And wow. We, we were, yeah. The heat got to us, I think, also, so we didn't really, yeah. Well, here's the thing. You know what? Uh, I do remember getting in a lot of offense. I got in hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> let me get. Let me tell you this, Everett. You know, before the match started, you know what? The ref was doing a sobriety test on this guy right here. He was. What? I mean, yes. he's doing a sobriety test on Happy? Why? Why? Why does, why does one need to do that? You know, frankly, any wrestler who feels the need to have a sobriety test administered to me is afraid of what's going to happen. I mean, <laughs> you know, if I'm sober, that's an advantage for them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, did you see the offense I got in? I looked uh -huh. at the footage. I got in most of the offense. Yes, you <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah you know uh, one to five doses of liquid courage and lo and behold i'm a wrecking machine <laughs> <laughs> you are a wrecking machine man and that's why that's why we enjoy you a lot man because i mean your happy hour man it, it's always happy it's always, happy. always a good time when I'm there. Ask the fans, what time is it? Uh -huh. <laughs> Absolutely. Happy hour. <laughs> it's happy hour. You got it. It's happy hour. I got it. We all got it. Yes. It's, oh, man. No, but I mean, when I saw that uh, double beer bomb, well, here's the thing. I was looking yeah. in the other direction, and then somebody was pointing, hey, and he was popping. I was like, what's he popping for? I'm right here. So I look around. I was like, holy crap, it's a double beer bomb. Yes. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. I love it, man. I I love it. This is this is no, great. such a fun night. That whole night was. was fun. It was a lot of fun. I mean, given the circumstances, uh, it was hard to top that. Yeah. Yeah. E even though we had a we we had a cheating um, title chain, you know, title retitle again, you know, with the uh, one Ray Lynn and uh, the. Uh, cheater, uh, the runway, yeah, the run, yeah, yeah. It, it, speaking of the runway, so Tyler Klein, uh, mm -hmm. I was in a match against Tyler Klein uh, a year ago, and yeah, I had the upper hand. I put on a big move. He grabbed my beer and baited me with my beer and rolled me up for a pin. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
damn. That, that, that's messed up, man. That that right. is that is pretty damn messed up. That oh, is pretty man. damn messed up. I was held hostage. What could I do? <laughs> <laughs> but but at the event there, David sent me a picture there. It was an, uh, that was an awesome pic of y- you and him right there. And then doing a pr- yeah yeah I I, the I promo loved- after the promo. I know the promo yeah. was great though. It really was perfect on the spot. Yeah, that oh, that was amazing, man. I I loved that. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. And I I said to myself, Can you imagine us three together? Ever? Can you imagine us three together? We, oh. <laughs> oh man, that'll yeah. happen. It'll happen. It will yeah. happen. 20, yeah. 20, we'll 20, talk, we'll 20. Drink, we'll talk. We'll drink. We'll drink. We'll drink. We'll talk. We'll drink. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a lot of everything in between there. That's that's yeah. basically what we'll do, end up doing there. But um, one thing, one thing, since we're talking about wrestling here, did you hear you heard about uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock? He was in headlines. Just uh, I, I heard about it last night. Uh, I had Chris yeah. Carnage over here. Chris, uh, David knows Chris Carnage. Chris Carnage. Yeah, he's his, one of his the co- his partner. Yep, his partner. Yeah, the uh, podcasting network. Well, he was over here last night, and we were throwing down uh, commentary <laughs> for episode five and six for Knockout TV, and uh, mm-hmm. we dropped some audio, and we had a good time. And in the after we got done dropping some audio. That's why I didn't get back with you, David. I was in the middle of, um, you know, uh, mm-hmm. calling, business. calling, you know, doing yeah, color, business. color, yeah, business, doing color commentary. There, his friend hit him up and said, uh, "Dude, Rock got COVID nineteen." I said, "What?" It's like, yeah, he, he, he oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I just saw some posts on that on Facebook earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had it, I guess, it. Yeah. apparently, and then he got over it, and he finally, yeah, awesome. yeah he, he got over, he, he it came out where he said, hey, I got COVID, got over it, I'm doing great, and I, I mean, I felt bad when I heard about that because of, you know, his wife and his, uh, he, you know, just, she just had a, had a baby and just, I mean. Oh, gosh, yeah. Just to have that in proximity of the baby. So speaking of wrestlers who had COVID, so the Rev, the Reverend Ron Hunt, he uh, had COVID. He actually put up a video describing his experiences. He recovered from COVID, but he had COVID. And, uh, yep, he described his experiences with it. And this was several months ago. Yeah, they said that each person experiences something different. They have something. Yep. They have something different there. Even uh, AJ Styles came out and said he just got over it. He and he mm-hmm. said he had nothing major, like everyone else has been talking about. I know Chris Carnage actually got it back in June. He got it back in mm-hmm. June. He said his head felt like it was going to explode, and he couldn't mm-hmm. taste or anything he couldn't taste anything and his temperature was going up and down like a roller coaster but he said well, his head wanted to just pop <laughs> let's let's move on everett did uh did happy happy did you watch the pay-per-view for uh wbf on sunday payback you talking about payback, payback? Oh. Yeah, I did not uh, watch it. Uh. I admit, I've uh, most of my wrestling watching has been indie matches, and uh, you know, I like indie. Yeah. Uh, truth be told, I haven't watched uh, a lot of uh, mainstream uh, wrestling in a long time. Mind you, don't get me wrong. I I would watch uh, women of wrestling from time uh-huh. to time because I'm I've actually been on shows with a lot of the women, uh, so I'm supporting. You know my uh, yes. fellows in the locker room. Uh, also, uh, I watch uh, Impact because I've been on shows and I've actually, yeah. Well, actually, Ever- Mad Man Everett, Morton, uh, what's that? Everett, Everett, go ahead and talk about Impact because you were you were had a good discussion last night. I'll let you talk about it. Go ahead. Oh, on Everett. Tuesday night on ELS and Cut. Yeah, Pluto. You ever heard of Pluto TV? Happy. Yes, I have. I get Pluto, stupid emails all the time about it on for files. <laughs> Pluto TV, they they redid it a while back ago, and they pretty much categorized everything, which I think is great because mm-hmm. on the side, because I got it on my Fire Stick. So on the side, right. on the right hand side, there you got to, you got music, entertainment, um, live TV, just okay. um, sports. Well, on the sports section, 
they have an Impact Wrestling channel. Just they show all mm. Impact Wrestling. And I was telling the Ripper on Tuesday night. I said, flipped over to, flipped over to Impact on uh, Pluto, and dude. Freaking, they were showing Asylum Years of TNA. AJ Styles going up against D'Lo Brown, Jerry Lynn. Oh, yeah, the olden days. Yeah, yeah. the old days, man, when they first started out. Oh, yeah. And then they've been showing the one-night-only uh, pay-per-views there. With one, I was sitting there watching the one. They had a steel cage match with all the women. I said, holy crap, mm-hmm. man, this is just great. And then they had one it was just tag team matches i watched the tag team with bobby Roode and austin aries going up against magnus and someone else i can't think oh samoa joe yeah it was magnus and samoa joe going up against bobby Roode and austin aries man that well i mean i was i mean i've been on shows with mad well actually last year in a charity show madman fulton chokeslammed me and uh also, uh, I've been on shows with Casey Spinelli. So, uh, you know, again, and uh, Giselle Shaw. So, again, supporting uh, uh, people that uh, I've been in the locker room with. So that was uh, the big thing that with regards to me watching some shows. But uh, I admit I have not watched a lot of WWE. I've watched some AEW, especially mm-hmm. since people I've been on shows with uh, have made it to Wardlow. I've been on uh, Wardlow's from here yeah. uh, in Pittsburgh. He's from IWC, and uh, I've been on shows with him. So uh, it's uh, awesome seeing him make it. Uh, I actually was this close to being on a show with uh, Darby Allen. Uh, I'm just like, uh, oh, man, so close. But I've, <laughs> that would have been awesome. That and been, I'm friends yeah. with Beastman. I'm sure you've seen Beastman on the indie circuit. Yeah, actually, uh, I'll send you guys a funny image uh, from uh, one of my matches uh, with Beastman. Actually, I have one funny gif and one funny image from that match. So I'll send that to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'd, oh, I'd yeah. Definitely, definitely love to check that but, out there. But TNA, I'll tell you what, TNA really, you know, was like the, the X Division. You remember that? Like oh, the yeah. X Division? I, I love the X Division. That was so fun, how they, that concept came about. Like, oh, dude. Climbing, oh, I love climbing, the X Division. Climbing, oh, climbing, climbing like a, you know? That's yeah. challenging. I but I mean, like, you know what I remember regarding the X Division Championship? I remember when Kurt Angle put over Jay Lethal. Yeah. Mm, that yeah. was huge. I mean, to me, that was huge because I was a huge Jay Lethal fan. So yeah. uh, I think we all, when that yeah, happened, we were, yeah. I felt like, you know, uh, Jay Lethal is finally going to get the push he deserves. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, he was. I, I watched him a lot back when he was in Ring of Honor. When he was in, when he was a heavyweight champion uh-huh. in Ring of Honor, mm-hmm. that was just fantastic. I I love that stuff. I mean, I I love the talent that came out of Ring of Honor at that time when I was really watching. Just it. the way, just the way the promos were were great. Oh, abyss Abyss all the time. Come on, like you know Raven and just like Rhino and you know like your hardcore. We you had our hardcore and that was great. Like you know. Oh, yeah. And, and then they stepped it up with the barbed wire eventually, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'll say this. I, for me personally, I never got into the six-sided ring, though. I felt like it created more complication than innovation. Truth oh, really? Be told. I feel like it messed with some wrestlers' timing and position. Have you ever, I was going to say, uh, Happy, have, have you ever tried one of those Six sided rings or try no, and uh, honestly, uh, that's I mean, what I just described is how I think you know, for incoming wrestlers, uh, go, getting into that, I, I would have the same problem. It, it would take a lot of getting used to, I mean, it's, especially it's a, from a positioning standpoint, because you have to have just like in basketball, you have to have a mental mental idea of where you are on the floor same with wrestling you have to have a mental idea where you are in the ring and uh, the other thing especially uh even just the regular uh squared circle 16 by 16 18 by 18 20 by 20 uh last year uh was the first time i did a 20 by 20 in a long time in fact it was a show it was you guys know uh keko amana right Mm, I, I've, I I've he, heard of the name. I've, I've probably, heard of the name. Here, here's, a, here's a great little detail. He was on Raw Underground this past Monday. Wow. <gasps> oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, he actually, there was a show. Uh, it was his ring. He has a 20 by 20. So uh, it, it definitely messed with my timing because uh, when I'm just like, you know, running the ropes, I'm like, oh, wait, why do I need another? Whoa. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. I must throw you off. 
because it's well, a different well, style. Yeah, and, it's, and, 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 and I know, and I'm sure that, you're 16 by 16. Yeah, and I'm sure that six sided ring is like a different. You know what I mean? Like when you, because mm-hmm. you have to figure the the angle on the when you're hitting that rope. You know, mm-hmm. those ropes yeah. are different. Yeah, because because. Yeah, the twenty by twenty man, you got actually got to do more steps than also. What, what about like a Japan ring, a Japanese ring? I was going to say too. Yeah, what? Do, yeah, I wonder what's about that. Dimension? What? What's what the, is the dimension ever, for a New Japan Wrestling's ring? What? What do you think it is? Happening? Like a normal? Can we look it up or somebody? New Japan's ring. Here, let's look it up. But yeah, honestly, most of the rings that I've done uh, mm-hmm. have been eighteen by eighteen. I've done some 16 by 16s which is not that much of an adjustment but going to 20 by 20 you're just like you know i thought i was taller (laughs) Mm -hmm. all right i pulled it up all right check it out new japan rings are measured in metrics and the ring mats are 6m by 6m 20 foot by okay 20 by foot 20 okay yeah they got a 20 by 20 by 20 there uh okay so they yeah, New Japan has the twenty by twenty. Let's see what ROH has. What's uh? Also oh, look up twenty twenty by twenty. Yeah, look up F, look up FMW or um, Freedoms. FMW B, or BJW, right? BJW. Yeah, have, honestly, I'm thinking anything that's televised is going to be twenty by twenty. Yeah, because you know anyone who's trying to televise themselves are trying to be trying to develop WWE level credibility. Yeah, and if What's you're it? going to do that, you have to look the same. Because what hey. happens is if a wrestler is coming from that promotion, gets signed by WWE, uh, and the ring is bigger, they look smaller. So they, they just got cheapened on TV. Everett, check out the uh, WWF's WWE's ring in AEW. 20, 20 by twenty. I already know that. A, uh, WWE's 20 by 20. AEW, I just pulled it up, 20 by 20. ROH, mm-hmm. Ring of Honor, 20 by 20. New Japan Wrestling, 20 by 20. Now, Impact, they went back to the six-sided ring, didn't they? Or are they doing the regular size ring? It's been a while since I've watched I watched New Impact. I haven't watched any, yeah. Let me pull it up here. Uh, Impact... I think it's still. I think it's a normal, size. normal. I think it's a normal ring nowadays for Zach. Ah, uh, so uh, take a guess. Take a get. Take a guess. For the what? Six sided ring. Actually, actually, you know what? Let's let's have a little bit of fun with David on this. Happy. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> Where is this wheel, ever? Yeah. All right. Let's go up. ahead. All right. I got the wheel up. Okay. I'm looking. All right. The wheel is up now. All right. This is how this is going to go. David's going to guess this. And if he he guesses it, then I'm going to spin the wheel. So, David, hmm. what is Impact Wrestling's ring size? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that Steve Austin. Yeah. <laughs> you like the Steve Austin. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's draft hey. day, man. It's draft okay, day. Um, so, I'm going to have to. So, I'm not looking at notes or anything. Um, You didn't see me touch it. I just. Okay, but I'm going to guess 20 by 20. No. You're correct. <laughs> All right. Let's. let's one, one, cheers, everyone. All right, well, let's spin the wheel and see what happens. On the wheel, I have one shot, two shot, all drink, 10 points, 20 points, and 50 points. So let's... Here we go. All right, here we go. We're going to spin the wheel. Got a sound effect? You hear it? I can imagine it's there. I can hear it. I'll just imagine I hear it. Okay. Ten points, <laughs> David. <laughs> won ten points. <laughs> ding ding ding. <laughs> you got ten cheers. points there. Okay, cheers for everyone. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. So I was going to say in the meantime. By the by the, by the way, look, what kind of beer are we uh, drinking for this show? Starting our show, Everett. Well, what let's go. It. Let's. All right, for me. I'll go because I'm the winner. I'm all right, winner. go ahead. Go ahead, Mister Winner. You're a winner, David. Well. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I'm going with the classic Coors Light. 
born in the Rockies. Okay. <laughs> Coors Light. Nice. Happy? I'm going with Hitchhiker Brewing Hole Punch Double Dreamsicle. Wow. And, my, <laughs> and myself, I'm actually going to be going with uh, Shock Top right here. <laughs> going with the old Shock Top. Yep. That's right. That's right. Is that got a flavor? Any flavor? Any flavor to that, Everett? Shock Top? Oh, God, yeah. Now, yes. happy, happy we'll though, it. about this here. Shock Top. You pour it in the glass, and you drink it with an a sli- uh, orange slice. Slice of orange, yes. Slice of orange. It tastes great. Mm-hmm. But it's a Belgium It's a Belgium white style wheat ale. Yep. Which yep. Was Same great. style as uh, Blue Moon, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why on Blue Moon, you also have a slice of orange. Same kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah, Very you, cool. Yeah, it's it, it's good to have that because like when I go out to steak restaurants, mm-hmm. I would have a blue moon. They would throw in an orange shock top. They offer that. They throw in an orange. But but mm-hmm. average some places don't put the orange in the drink. Yeah, the some beer. places don't. They that's, just pour it in there. Yeah, and happy. I'm sure you've experienced that too. And it's like, come on, well, really? In fairness, uh, you know, there's some places that treat beer as beer. Yeah. Uh, to them, it's just put beer in glass. There's no nuance or anything about it. And then other places that really value. I mean, you know, if you go to a place that's a dive bar and it's a place where everything on tap is like four bucks, uh, you know, you're not going to care. There, you just want beer in glass and uh, drink. But if you go to a nicer place or a restaurant, like you said, if you have a steak, chances are that a glass of beer is going to be six bucks. Uh, you want, you know, a little more service level. You know, if I go to a nice place to eat, I don't mind paying a little more if I get better quality and better service. Because at the end of the day, that's what separates the uh, four Forty dollar steakhouse versus the uh, nine ninety nine special at Waffle House. You know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Good point. I mean, good point. Sure. And you pay you pay for what you get. You you definitely yep. you definitely pay for what you get there. Mm-hmm. Since since we're talking about wrestling and doing some, doing some wrestle, let's jump and do some wrestle trivia now. Okay. okay. Well, before you do uh, before you do that, I wanted to make mention. So I actually just uh, sent you a link to the GIF that mixes wrestling, beer, and Beast Man. So uh, uh, take a quick look. Oh. It's a five second five second GIF. Take a quick. I wish look. you could just. I wish you could. If you like. But Ooh, put it up, Everett. Put it right in the middle. Do it. <laughs> there we go. I'll watch it. Yeah. Let me go ahead and web capture it. Let me go ahead and web capture it here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, I want to web web browser capture it. <laughs> Five minutes away. Hold on. <laughs> now is that classic or what? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's oh, wow. great. That yes. is great. <laughs> oh, that is that is great. <laughs> oh damn! Oh. damn. That is that is great. So there we go. Cheap little plug for Beast Man. <laughs> Beast Man, if you're watching, Husk. <laughs> Husk. Yes. Uh, All right. Uh, great. There, we got the wheel up right now. We got the wheel up. I got it. I got it up on another screen here, so <laughs> we get the wheel up. All right. Everett, are you going to be? Are you going to be next, or is who's next? Happy's next. Happy's yes. next. You won ten points. So, David, you got All ten right. points. All right. If we get to a hundred, the first one to get to a hundred wins. So that's why I threw the fifty in there. The fifties wild card one. If you hit that wild card, if you get two fifties. That's it. That's game, man. <laughs> oh man, that's a qu- yeah. That would be a quick game, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it's it's oddly. So let's go ahead. I'll throw out a trivia. Since we're talking about wrestling here, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Since since we're talking about impact, we're talking about ring sizes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Extreme. Championship Wrestling, ECW. Okay. ECW! Uh, what size ring did they use, Happy? Mm. Mm. I got it right. ECW, here. I'm tempted to say they used an 18 by 18 ring. 
Oh, you're oh. correct. They did. Ding, 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 they ding, did. ding, ding. Yes, yes. There's, there's a, there go. All right. Let's spin that wheel. Here we go. <laughs> it's the wheel going. is spinning. It's slowly spinning. So, I have a little confession to make. Here it goes. Uh, it. Ooh, I, 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 take two shots, Happy. <laughs> oh. Before I take two shots, I have a little confession regarding the question. So I have wrestled in the ECW ring before. So that's oh. how I knew. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. There's one. All right. One for the gusto. Hold on, let him breathe. Let him breathe. There's one, and there's two. All right. <laughs> oh boy. All right. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ever? Maybe. Maybe Happy will ask you a trivia question. Ooh. Okay. I I won't Google it. Let's. All right. Go ahead, Happy. Fire away. Fire, fire away. So, wrestling trivia question. Yes. For Everett to spin the wheel. Yep, on the wheel. All right. All right. So, let's see. Take off the glasses, Everett. I really hate <laughs> Oh, I got You don't one. like the glasses? It, it, look, it's yes, draft I day. I dress for I the know. occasion, man. Okay, well, put it back on, you damn. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, you, you the ribbing, right. the, the, the ribbing <laughs> begins? <laughs> yes. All right. I do want to mention this right here. I want to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dive more into the conversation right here. But first, there's a couple things I do want to mention. Since 1995, HighSpots.com has grown to be the company it is by serving the wrestling fans throughout the world with a great selection of merchandise. HighSpots.com has everything a wrestling fan could want, including the latest WWE and TNA releases, classic wrestling merchandise, and their HighSpots.com exclusive releases. HighSpots.com is the leading online retailer for professional wrestling and mixed martial arts, offering autographs, figures, DVDs, apparel, wrestling gear, and even wrestling rings. Their largest clients include WWE, Impact Wrestling, ROH and AEW. Click on the High Spots logo on the Everett Lee Show page over on podcast.net to order. Whether you are a wrestling fan, pro wrestler, or promoter, you can find what you're looking for at highspots.com. If you grew up as a kid in the 1980s or just a fan of 1980s pop culture, then ADTs is for you. ADTs sells a huge variety of licensed t shirts featuring characters, movies, TV shows, video games, and music stars from the 1980s through today. They also have great costumes from 80s pulp culture too. ADTs.com sells officially licensed pulp culture t shirts. As you might guess, their focus is on the 1980s, but do sometimes sell other cool pop culture related tees. 80s Tees has been in business since 2000, meaning they like retro 80s stuff to before it was cool. Follow the link provided in the description section of this episode for more. 80stees.com you're listening to The Everett Lee Show. The day Big Show made his WWF debut, uh, what match did he interfere in? Oh. All right. Ah. Uh. He debuted at the in, at the 1999 Saint Valentine's Day Massacre during the steel cage match with Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon. Very good, <laughs> very good. <All> right. <laughs> I am going to spin the wheel. Let's see what Ooh, we get. Spin the wheel. <laughs> there it goes. Click, 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 click. Yes. <laughs> Time delay on the uh, stream. Whatever. Ooh, fifty points. 
<laughs> Damn, rigged. I call it rigged. No, no, yeah, no, rigged. No. That's that's rigged. We're suing. <laughs> <laughs> I just I feel like there's some Bobby the Brain shenanigans going on here. <laughs> I mean, I do heel commentary. I do heel commentary for Knockout Wrestling. Uh, I'm I'm the heel commentary guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, David. Let's do yes, another sir. trivia trivia one here. All right. Let me Okay. All right. An easy one. Okay. What what was the main event at the 1992 SummerSlam pay-per-view? 19... Oh, man. Shit. Is that a little bit hard? Uh, Yeah, a little bit. Throw something something my way that I would know. Okay. Easy, easy question. What was the main event... At WrestleMania five. Oh, oh man! <laughs> I, oh, would that would be the Mega Powers explode? Randy Macho Man Savage versus Hulk Hogan. Ding ding! You are correct. <laughs> we will spin the wheel and see where it lands. Yeah. It is just going slow. Where's it stopping? Where's it stopping? Oh, crap. I didn't Ooh, was... two shots. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do get real shots? I got some Malibu. By the way, for anyone having this, be careful. This is nine percent ABV. I have Malibu. It looks good. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Two. All right. <laughs> and a chaser. Hold up. And a chaser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Coors Light and uh, yeah. Wait. That's a different taste. That's a different taste. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. Happy. Okay. All right. Can I throw a question in sometime? Yeah, go ahead. All right, ask. All right, go ahead, ask I don't love. I mean, yeah. All right, go ahead. Question, happy. Go ahead. Let's 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 go back to old school WWF. How many? Who has appeared on Piper's Pit? I'm sorry. What was the question? Who? Okay. Who appear? Who was? Would Roddy Piper bring in Piper's Pit? In Piper's Pit. The Piper's okay. Pit. Who were the guests? Who would, were, who would? Yeah, who were the wrestlers and people and managers as well? Ooh. Wait. So you're asking about like any specific one? Yeah. Ever that, tell them? Well, <laughs> it's uh, okay. I, we'll, 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 all right. We'll say this. What ma- manager did Rowdy Piper tie to a chair? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. Because I was going to say, if I was going back, I remember uh, a Mr. Wonderful being there, Andre the uh, Andre the Giant being there. Uh, I remember. Uh, let's see. Uh, Heenan was there. I remember. Let's see. He had Jake the Snake on there. He had was Brother Love on there. Uh, he had uh oh he did a special one with um or morton downey jr uh let's see gosh there was like a, a, a cowboy bob orton was there um god damn <laughs> okay how about how about this which uh, superstar did uh piper take a coconut to <laughs> snooker, 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 snooker,
Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so many get so many guests on that show. Remember, like really. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. So many. Well, I was going to say the big. I think it was, was it WrestleMania three where Piper's Pit had Morton Downey Jr. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 That was that was that was that was WrestleMania five. Five, five. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Because yeah, yeah, I was yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. That was at five. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Three was the one at Pontiac Silverdome. That's it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to spin the wheel. Here we go. Spin the wheel. <laughs> oh. Ooh, 20 points. Look at that. There you go. I'm on the board. Happy is on the board. Ever Lee has 50 points. David C. Russell with uh, Will Happy with 20. And David C. Russell with 10. <laughs> Shh, too many to put. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love this, Everett. This is a this is a way we need to do this. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a new way to do draft day. I, I will say this. I, I will throw in a little bit of history here about draft day. Draft day sure. started back in back in 2016 on episode 11 of the Everett Lee show. It was f formerly known as Draft Tuesday. I started with my nephew. He would come on and we would have, we'd buy six pack of different beers <laughs> and we would t drink them and we would pick which one would be the draft pick of the week. And okay. I did it there for a few weeks and then I started looking at the hole that was burning in my pocket and I said, I'm just going to have to do this from instead of once a week to once a month. And we started doing it once a month there. At the end of each month, we would do a draft, do draft Tuesday. And it developed there after a while. And then it fell off there because my mm -hmm. nephew quit coming over. He, my, my nephew <laughs> would start stuff and then he would never finish it. And then, and then, never, then get and then got married, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but he never did come back over. So he never did come back over to to do anything with it. Chris Carnage did it with me there for a while. Then after I think it was in 2017, 2018, around there, we Chris Carnage re recoined Draft Tuesday as Draft Day. And we did it at one of our sponsor right there. You can see on the on the draft day logo, City Limits Tap Room in Deland, Florida. We would do it right there, live on location, do draft day. And, 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 and also, you yeah. actually and you did our you did an anniversary show there with uh, JJ McGuire as well. Yeah, Podcast Day Network's one year anniversary. Actually, the first one, first year and second year anniversary was held there at the City Limits Tap Room. But we did draft day on both of those on the one year anniversary there, and we did it on the two year anniversary. Even, even though I was, even though I wasn't there, I actually represented Everett with a plaque. It was really cool. Do you it still was. have that Everett? Where is? It? Yes, I Oof. have it Ooh. with stuff. Right. I have a pile. Of stuff I got oh, hanging shit. up here, <laughs> but yeah, I have it. Yeah, I have it. Yeah. I have it. I, I found cool. it and I had to sit on my desk here. But yeah, the, yeah. That's JJ, how, JJ, that's how, JJ brought that, gave it to him, and presented it to him. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have Thirsty Thursday. Yes, <laughs> Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. It's been thirsty a while. Saturday. It's yeah. been a while since I did a draft day because with with this pandemic going on. Why David said, "Yeah, we should get happy on, and we should, you know, do like an episode have, where we have some drinks." I said, "Heck yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. Let me bring draft day back and do a twist to it." So this is right here is a twist the future to it. draft day. Yeah. This is the new draft day. I new draft. Got some. This is the pandemic draft day. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what'd be funny is if if you did this like if all of us were all together in person and we did this mm -hmm. it would we'd have oh, one absolutely. of the things on the wheel where basically it's like you, you have to drink a bottle of corona <laughs> 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 the drink not not the virus but the drink <laughs> right <yeah. laughs> right ever <laughs> context right <laughs> we'll would, have a well i'll tell you whatever it will do uh, when this whole thing pandemic crap Clears twenty twenty nine two thousand whatever year it ends and you know what we'll get together we'll, we'll go to Florida we'll come to Everett's in Florida 
How's that? We'll do a draft day live in the backyard. Who? <laughs> <laughs> that would that would be that would be great. A little, yeah, that would that would definitely <laughs> would be great. Now, with would you post me? Uh, yeah, you keep on sending gifts and stuff. Everybody's. No, this is not a gift. This is an image from that same match. Oh, good job. <laughs> Your hand. Look at the handprint. Oh, my God. Look at his chest. Like I'll pull this up like, here. The wrinkly. Yep. The wrinkle effect. Oh, the chop. Yep. Oh I'll my pull God. this up here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to wow. Oh, oh my god. Caption this, man. Wow. I mean, he just <laughs> laid into you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a good picture. <laughs> and yes, it did hurt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it left a mark, I'm sure. Yeah, he did. He absolutely did. <laughs> Oh damn! Look at your face. Look at your face. Your face is like, um, okay, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, happy hour matches are always uh, entertaining in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> 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 oh, they, they have to be man from from what the matches I watched entertaining I love it I love it I I feel that having having a match you have a when you go see a wrestling match a, a, mm -hmm. on the card it's good to start out with that match to get people on their toes that like right. you know it's like get you yeah ready. the starter yep, yes the starter the, match the starter match there get you ready and stuff because when that by that's over you're like oh man you know I'm ready for more then you have another match that's about equal to that too and you don't let the you don't let your foot off the gas and you just go with, i mean go with it and then, you get, say, then you get your sleep and you get your sleeper match of course mm -hmm. yeah and well, then you get your, believe it or not believe it or not i've had a lot of matches where i was uh just before main event because what happens is, you know, second half of a show, you got your more serious matches. But the thing is, if you stack them all together, you know, you don't give anybody, you don't give the crowd a breather. So what happens is, you know, you'll have, say, your uh, tag team championship, uh, then my match, and then the heavyweight championship uh, as the main event. That way, everybody has a chance to reset themselves uh, because, you know, there are some promotions that uh, have like nine or ten matches in a show and you just kind of it's overwhelming. It's mm. too much brain drain, especially if in the second half you have you have six matches in the first half, four matches in the second half and all four of your matches in the second half or three of the four are title matches. And everybody's just like, eh. yeah, you don't give people a chance to kind of rejuvenate or re-energize and or you get to, and then you get the fans that'll just go home. Exactly. Well, here's the thing. If you have 10 matches on a card, especially if they bring kids, you know, uh, and that's just it. Part of the fun is kids like to see people who are larger than life uh, go at it in the ring. And but, uh, you know, but you two hours into the show, they're already yeah. restless. And, uh, you know, you're missing the last couple of matches hey. on a show. Hey. But you have the special needs. But, yes, we understand they have to go home, you know, right. as well. You know, no, we understand they have to go, but at the same oh, yeah. time, you know what? It, it, you end up getting people tuned out. If a wrestling show takes like three and a half hours, you've already lost everybody by about hour, two to two and a half hours in. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's it, it's true, because I I watched I went to a I went to a live show that was down here, uh, and the first half of the card, I was like, wow. I mean, I was like, is it going to pick up? The second part of the card, like you said, was the more serious matches. It was like they had they had the ones who were green at the beginning of it. And mm -hmm. there was a couple, like they had three matches, a couple of matches. It's just I, you, you see, you've seen some mistakes. And as a mm -hmm. man and on the crowd, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you can't miss it. But then by and then understanding it's like, oh yeah, this is basically this is okay. They're green. This is their matches here. Intermission. I'll be right back. You Go come ahead. back. You come back to intermission, and then you have the more serious matches. You have like the vet, the veterans, 
or that's been around and they have that match. I mean, you have your more, you know, your deeper storyline matches, your title matches, things like that. I mean, you know, basically I'm more of a traditionalist. I like, uh, you know, well, number one, I like to use wrestlers in a way that highlight their strengths. Don't get me wrong. If I show up to a promotion for the first time and the booker says he wants me to do this, this, and this, or take this approach, I'll do it because, hey, he's the booker and you know, I'm the wrestler. I, fo- I should follow what the booker says. That being said, if I felt like, uh, you know, I was not used in a way to both make, if I don't uh, shine or if I don't look strong or if I, you know, don't come off in a way that entertains, then I look bad and the promotion looks bad too. Yeah. So it, highlighting the strength is a win-win for both the promotion and the wrestler. So, you know, I mean, you know, you've seen enough of my content. Uh, David got to see me live, and he understands what my strength is and how I connect with the crowd. If you're trying to have me wrestle seriously, or try to have me be a heel, or you know, try to overdo it on the overbooking, over seriousness, uh, it doesn't come off looking good for the show or me because those are not. Uh, I'm not giving you the best of my uh, arsenal, whereas. At Intergender Bonanza, everything I did, I mean, from beginning to end, I mean, mind you, uh, the match, uh, I mean, curtain to curtain, it was probably about 10 minutes, uh, and I'm good for probably up to about 12 to 13 minutes, curtain to curtain, without it getting stale. And uh, we hit everything we needed to hit. Uh, The crowd was into it. The crowd did not get bored because we didn't go too far over and we kept acknowledging the crowd. And I think that's the key. Uh, The key to happy hour is if uh, the crowd has a good time when I'm having a good time. So as long as I keep having a good time, the crowd's going to feed off of that. And it showed. I mean, Dave saw it firsthand that that's my art. That's my craft. Have a good time. Yeah, yep. you you have to, you have to have a good time there, and that I, that I think that's awesome. Sorry about sorry about that. I had to use the uh, men's room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you 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 did the pre the pre sh- the pre show um, without inviting us, didn't you? <laughs> no, <laughs> before the live but stream I, tonight. But <laughs> I did hear I did but, hear I did hear what was going on though. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and. I, I think that's awesome, you man. You got to see you get to see Happy live mm-hmm. in his environment, and that's that's amazing. I, I and next time, that. next time that I'm going to get more clips, videos. <laughs> I'm going to record his whole match. I I wanted to. I was just so busy enjoying myself. Well, that's yeah. well, that's good. That's good. What what gets me is when you. I, I've seen this at at wrestling events where they're basically watching the match through their cell phone. I, I I was doing that when NXT first was coming to Daytona Beach. I was doing that quite a bit. I, oh yeah, I was man. I was sitting there like like I was sitting there like in one match. I had my I had to come home when I came home from watching. You NXT. brought your camera. I had to dump my phone on my computer because I took so many matches. I almost did like it was like a slideshow of someone getting clothesline, you know? Because I'm like, oh, you know, you know. <laughs> just, yeah, taking all like, our cameras. Why do I need? Why do I need a hundred pictures of a person coming in for a clothesline? You just need that one moment. And then I, I was, I was sitting there, and I wasn't enjoying it as much. And I sat there w- one of the times when they came, the Daytona, and I sat there, and I pulled out my phone. Of course, snap some, snap some, and I stopped, and I looked, and I see other people doing the same thing, and I was like. Uh, I stuck it in my pocket, and just sat back, and it was like, oh yeah, I just got into it, and I just didn't, I didn't need the need for that because I, I, it just, it felt better without having to view a match through your phone there. <laughs> oh man or the best part when you're not the only one uh you do that and then you see four people in front of you doing the same thing <laughs> and get on on film <laughs> i'm filming other people filming <laughs> yeah, <great. laughs> yeah that's that that right there it just it it just it didn't do but, it for me there you but, know what think ba- thinking back of it now you look back at time and when 
we didn't have phones. We actually had cameras, you know, in the, the camera, like the Kodak camera was like the original Polaroid was, you know, and then we like progressed through the years and we like get these 5X or the 4X ca- uh, Canon or Samsung or or Sony or, you know. And, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, uh, going back to earlier when you stepped out, Dave, so basically what I was kind of pointing out was, you know, my thing is uh, if I'm having a good time, I want to relay that to the crowd. And I think you got to see firsthand that my thing, my whole thing is connecting with the crowd. I mean, really, at the end of the day, I'm an everyman. And the funny thing is, you know, part of the reason why I down a beer or two uh, before I enter the ring is so that way I have, I show some beer belly. Otherwise, uh, if I'm not drinking beer, I actually have some abs, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have the abs. <laughs> but, uh, but the thing is, uh, if I went in just looking at like normal buff guy, generic wrestler, nobody's going to care. But when I come out having a good time and looking like the everyman, that's when the fans care because they feel like they're being represented. Yeah. I mean, you, and, and I'll tell you what, Everett, this guy, after the show, there were a lot of fans coming up to him and talking with him. Like he, he got pictures with everybody and just, they wanted him to come back, like, come back, please come back. We got, please come back chance. It was great. Well, that's <laughs> well, like, like, you know, that's how yeah. it's supposed to be, man. That's, that's right. how it's supposed to be, man. He, I mean, you know, having people come up, and after the show, like, man, you know, that was amazing. I love that, you know. And Where are you, you going to be next? Where are you going to be next, you know? Come on. <laughs> Let's well, spin the wheel, like, Everett. Let's do some yep. trivia. Yep. Spin our damn wheel. Come All on. Right. Keep it going. All right. I got some uh, more wrestling, got, wrestling trivia. Who who was who was next? It was. Uh, I'm actually having a yingling right now. Yingling light. <laughs> I found in the I, fridge. I Come. cracked open the shock top here. Well, actually, wait, Everett, aren't you next? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah, because I did coconuts. I just did coconuts. Yes. So you're up. I am up. I am up. Okay, David didn't... David, As, you asked me a question, right? So it's Happy's turn to ask me a question. Yes. Wait, I thought I asked you... Oh, wait. Yes, you wait. did. Yes. Yep, I, I asked the uh, question. It's my turn. It's oh, my okay, turn. David, yes. Yep. All right, fire away, David. All right, Everett. What was your first match that you saw as a kid? On TV or live? Live. Live. Oh. Actually, I went to the Ocean Center in 1994 and saw a WWF house show. And I can't tell you who was on the card. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right how about we how about we fast forward to a pay-per-view for WWE that you've been to that you've seen or okay that you wouldn't but my first WWE pay-per-view i seen was uh july 21st 2014 battleground in tampa florida I got the chair just to, to prove it. <laughs> All right, so I will spin the wheel. I will spin the wheel here. Let's, who was there Everett? goes the wheel. It's spinning. Wait, who was the main event? Who was the main event though? I'll tell you uh, right here. Mm-hmm. Ooh, twenty points! Ding 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 ding. Just for that, I'll just will drink to that. <laughs> you have to, you have to drink twenty drinks of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how. That did it. Did I ever tell you I could do like a Stone Cold Steve Austin impersonation there? <laughs> yes. Oh, well, Stone Cold early. Steve Austin is going to take a couple beers, son. And he's going to take them. He's going to crack those son of bitches open. He's going to just <laughs> chug them. And then that's the bottom line, David, because Stone Cold said so. What? <laughs> wow. That's a good one, Everett. That's a good Steve Austin. <laughs> but let, let, let me get you. Ah, ah. You know what? Everett on the Everett Lee show showed us his 
chugging some beers with the dog cold Steve Austin, giving him a hell yeah with Mr. Happy Hour. Yeah, that's the hell bottom line because yeah. we're having a well, good damn time. <laughs> well, I'll, do my, I'll do my best strong bad impression. Okay. Dear strong bad. How is it very hard to type with those boxing gloves on? Uh, crapfully yours, Steve from Kansas. <laughs> well, you know, Steve. <laughs> I'd really appreciate it if you proofread your emails before you sent them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Mm. All right. Up now. David, you're up now for spin the wheel. All right. All right. I got some WWE trivia. Okay. WWE, WWE. WWE trivia. All right. What is Seth Rollins finisher? What's it called? <laughs> Because I know it blacks out hit the victims. Mm. <laughs> blacks out is you, it. you Google in there. Right. You're looking right at here. Hold on. You look right. like you're Googling, man. Yeah, I Google right now. Look, no, you no, no, he's muting and going, Alexa, what Seth Rollins finisher? <laughs> Alexa, please tell me. <laughs> I don't know, Everett. Cash. Uh, no, I'll I'll give it to you. I I just said it. It blacks Black out. out. Ding ding. There you go. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's spin the wheel and see what happens here. <laughs> I'm probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is great. <laughs> Ooh, 10 points, David. <laughs> What's up with my 10 points again? <laughs> Jesus. That's it. <laughs> 10 points. Ten hey, <laughs> one inch at a time, dude. One inch at a time. <laughs> <laughs> 10 points. What am I going to do for 10 points? You know what? Know, <laughs> what How's that, Everett? <laughs> I'm fucking... I'm going to fucking cheers, Everett. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do for 10 points? <laughs> Actually, David, the question is, what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> <laughs> no, Everything. actually, no. it's after 10. So who would you do for a Klondike bar? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking of like, 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 like ice cream bars, you know which figures were which wrestlers were on the original oh man ice cream ice cream um sandwiches are you asking Remember? happy this <laughs> all of us all, you got <laughs> ask, all right ask cap okay happy david I feel like a trans oh, man. sometimes. You okay. know, I remember the old stupid promos yes. on uh, WWF Saturday morning. I remember there was one with uh, Blackjack Mulligan who was like, oh, they need these in jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> Everett, find, it all, find a video. See if there's a video well, out there. Well. I, I can't. Pl I won't be able to play the audio because oh. of the way I don't have it set up here. So it's all right. I wouldn't but play it anyway. But um, all right. Yeah. Ask. I'll, I'll ask. A, I'll ask Happy a question because you had, okay. you asked him last time. All right. Okay. All right. His. <laughs> it's like I'm looking on Google. Oh, okay. All right. This, yeah. All right. Here's an easy one. His move is the Tombstone Pal Driver. What is his name? Well, which one? Uh, are yeah, we talking uh, Mark Calloway real. or Glenn Jacobs? <laughs> I'll give you some choices. A, Eddie Guerrero. B, The Undertaker. C, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Or D, Sting. <laughs> well, it's the Undertaker, but then of course we remember the uh, botched uh, uh, scenario at the WrestleMania match where uh, Roman Reigns couldn't get him up for the uh, reverse uh, Tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was that was nuts, man. Yeah. That was nuts. <laughs> I will 
Mm. Well, yeah, you're right. Who who is it? I guess character name. I guess character name. Who? Yeah. Well, the character? reason I bring up going Jacobs because Kane did a tombstone uh, too. In fact, he tombstone Pete Rose like three uh, WrestleManias in a row. <laughs> you know, you're right. I don't know what yeah. this site's thinking about. <laughs> all right so i mean the answer pretty much was b wasn't it i mean yeah the all right. undertaker let's spin the wheel <laughs> you will wheel is rest in peace well i was going to say it's thanks to wwe that pete rose is technically a hall of famer <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's um mm-hmm <laughs> uh, it's well look at that one shot happy you take one shot <laughs> one shot of beer already then oh, geez. Mm. oh boy good stuff good stuff <laughs> all right um who's up next oh Dave's up next, or no? I'm you're up next, right? Yes, That's yes. Right. I'm up. I'm up next. Uh, all right. Okay, I got a question for you. Okay, here we go. So, who was the second Money in the Bank winner ever, and when did he cash it in? Oh, <laughs> Everett's gonna be like, ooh. I, I noticed too. Everett's like, oh. Well, this is uh, the hint I'll give is this is kind of a big deal. So uh, yeah, this is a very notorious. It would be Edge. He's the second Money in the Bank winner, and he cashed in oh. at oh, on me? John Cena at New Year's Revolution. Dude. Incorrect. Edge was the first Money in the Bank winner. Uh, RVD was the second Money in the Bank winner and cashed it in at one night stand. Oh, oh man. fucking show. I, yeah. Oh, fucking show. Yes, I remember oh, that. That was a huge deal because yes. he cashed it in for the ECW title. Yes, he, yes, did. he did. Or no, 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 no. He he. Did he? No, he cashed it in for the WWE Championship. Because no, no, he won the WWE Championship uh, separately because he had both championships. He, but wrestled, he cashed it in. He wrestled against John Cena, didn't he? Yeah, because John Cena. Yes, at, at yeah. ECW's One Night Stand Two, they wrestled. I know that. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I was oh, going to yes. say because yeah, because RVD yeah. actually declared he's going to cash it in for the ECW title. When he won the Money in the Bank, he declared he's going to cash it in for the ECW title. Oh yeah, that's right. That's it. right. He won it at one yeah. night stand too. Yep. Yes, exactly. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right. That's the whole. That was the whole premise of why because I was that there for that one. What was one of the yeah. hottest crowds in the history of ever? No, it was yeah. crazy night. What a crazy yeah. night! Oh, that I, crowd was hotter than any wrestling crowd I love I've ever seen. I, I loved it. Like I said, I was in the second, sixth row behind uh, Jerry, uh, Michael, um, Joey Styles, and Jerry mm -hmm. the Cake Lawler on commentary. It was great. It was oh really my gosh, great. that the crowd was just so wildly hot. We yeah. ride. I, I, I've never riot. seen a John Cena get turned on by a crowd to that degree. I mean, <laughs> there's for a T-shirt and just Cena for a going, -shirt. going on, yep. uh, but a lot of that feels like it might be channeled through speakers. But this crowd, oh it, my god, it was on fire! It really was. I wasn't expecting that. Really, I was not expecting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 was nuts, man. I I remember that uh, just watching it on the pay per view there. That I'm that was watch, crazy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it tomorrow. Yeah, I, 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 I watch it this weekend. Maybe something to go back to watch there. All right, I am going to spin the wheel of doom. <laughs> uh oh, no, oh, no, technical difficulties. There, the slow <laughs> <laughs> that was you, Everett. <laughs> Ooh, one shot. Thank you. I finally get to take a shot. <laughs> Here's to you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> or Everett, aren't you hot with that? Uh, no. Everett, aren't you hot with that damn long sleeve? <laughs> I got, I got, long air, I got air blowing on me. It's Florida, man. You get what, used to it. What is that? Is that is that flowers on your shirt, Everett? No, it's this like is wearing? a this is a um. What do you call it? Is your mother's robe? No, it's not a. No, it's a. It's a flower shirt, and it's a um, what do you call it? The okay, I was Hawaiian. gonna say Jimmy Dean. Yeah, it's a Hawaiian shirt. It's a um, Panama Jack. Well, okay, let's see it. <laughs> Style it off for a minute. Style it. Just turn around. Go right. here. <laughs> Thanks, Higgins. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Ooh, he's looking a little bit Don Juan. Don. Oh, actually, he's looking Don Morocco right now. <laughs> Don the original Morocco. Rock. The original I rock. am Don Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> that character. I'll tell you what. That... Hello, ladies. <laughs> Don Morocco. He's. Yep. I seen. I seen him recently on a live Twitter or so, or Facebook Live. He looks. Oh yeah, he was on the. Uh, there was somebody who had him on a podcast. Oh. Uh, Mike Dorsey's uh, drawers. Dorsey, uh, dumpster, Duke the dumpster, Dorsey. Yeah, yeah, Duke Ross, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, he looks that. good. Good old Don Morocco, man. Don, <laughs> Don Morocco, man. He was, yeah, he was, he was a heel. I'm trying to remember. Yep. Yeah, he was. A, he, was he was a great heel. heel. I, mm -hmm. I, I liked. I liked those great heels that can actually work the crowd and actually get in there and bring heat. You know, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I know a really good heel is when they when they're on their way to the ring there coming out of entrance and the fans are like call, you know, saying, "You suck, or I hate you." And they look mm -hmm. and they're like, mm. you know, just the reaction, how they interact with the with with the crowd. And they get in the ring in there and they grab the mic, they're like, "Hey everyone, Shut up! I got something to say, and you know, just like boo. It just yeah. He like, had that. He had he had that. Yeah, persona. Yeah, he had that. Lever, like getting in the ring with like versus Roddy Piper and like <laughs> like Mister Wonderful pa Paul Orndorff. Paul Orndorff. You know, like, yeah. I, I forget. Like, I forget which which wrestler it was. They were in the ring, and the and the crowd hated him so much that. They, I mean, they were just booing him, booing him, and he was in the ring with someone. I, I wish I could remember who it was, and they they were just giving it to him, and he was just ignoring them. And finally, he said, "He said, what town are we in?" And they're like, "Oh, oh, we're in this, we're in this town." I was like, "Oh, no wonder nothing's worth a damn in this town anyway." And the crowd just went magnify <laughs> it's <was> just <laughs> i just was like oh god that's one way to get a crowd mad at you just just mm -hmm. just mention the town there you're in and well, yeah just, that's that's you know oh, that's that, technically that's, i want to say i want to say i want to i want to say happy i'm sure that's <laughs> you like to try to mix it up like you know like that would you know where are you from you know like or some sort of like Throw a word out to people. Oh, no, absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, that's part of the heel textbook. Uh, you know, when you want to incorporate, I mean, two things. One, make sure no other heel on the show is doing it because then it just becomes repeat and stale. Uh, two, come up with something creative. You know, it, it, honestly, just saying, oh, this city is this oh i'm here what a dump that's kind of cheap be a little creative you know fit it to your gimmick like if i was a heel uh i would pick on a popular bar or brewery or something you know and kind of pick it apart uh or you know here's the ultimate heel move like a favorite brewery in that town you know bring a beer look like i'm gonna drink it and pour it out. <laughs> mm, that'd be and, great. And say, this is twill. And this is horse piss, you know? <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. When you do something like that, you know, say something to make people boo, but at the same time, leave a little room for someone to say something, for someone clever to say something back. Like if I poured it out and said, this is, this tastes like horse piss. Somebody's like, how do you know what horse piss tastes like? You know? <laughs> <laughs> true. That's you, true. You, you've got to draw the heat, but leave room for the heel to, I mean, for the face to get a pop. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have to. 
you you have to because I mean the heel when I, when I see a good heel get in the ring there and they're making the face look really good, it's it's weird happy because with with me working for a wrestling promotion here in Florida and getting used work, to the people yeah. working working with like behind the scenes and seeing a lot of stuff and then sitting there talk listening to veterans talk about a match mm -hmm. and and break it down psychology. Right. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I, I'm not looking. I, I don't look at wrestling at, from a fan point of view now, because when I sit there and watch it, when two weeks ago when I watched SummerSlam, mm -hmm. the Dominic Mysterio and Seth Rollins match, I know a lot of people like fans had a lot of mixed emotion with it. But when I sat there and watched it and I heard about it, I said Dominic's good. And I mentioned it to someone. They said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Dominic's good. He's in. He's in good hands for tonight for that match because with with the resume and career of Seth Rollins, how long he's been doing it, I, Rollins took care of him. And when I was watching the match, psychology wise, looking at stuff, I was like, "Yeah, he did. He he took care of Dominic, and he let Dominic have his moments. And then, mm -hmm. you, you know, and I, I look at it like that now. And then." Of course, fans are not going to look at it like that. They're going to look at it totally different from what I what I look at it now. And I just I find that interesting because I can't look at wrestling the same now. Once I'm in in it now, with especially doing commentary and stuff and having that opportunity to do that now, I look at wrestling a lot different. <laughs> Happy, it's crazy. Well, well, well. I'll say this. I mean, you know, since the curtain's already pulled, there are a lot of heels out there who love working me uh, for two reasons. One is I get enough pops that anything they do just comes off that much more evil. Uh, and two, uh, I get... I'm built to take a beating. I can take a beating and... Uh, Heels love that because uh, unless it's ridiculous and I have zero confidence that they can execute it, I'll take any move. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, Full-time boss Christian Ross, he yes. basically hit two moves on me, and they're both big. One was a huge, uh, you know, knock my block off kick, <laughs> and then the other was an abyss slam, like a black hole slam. Yep. Yeah. You know, for someone my size, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, it makes him look that much more intimidating when he can do that to someone my size. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing. People who have faced me that have hit big moves on me, they'll be like, uh, holy crap. He he's uh, very deceptive. I'm actually uh, that's the one thing I'll say about uh, being trained. Uh, I can make it, any wrestler. Uh, hit their big moves easy. Uh, in fact, uh, a four foot ten woman hit a, a four foot ten, hundred pound soaking wet. She hit a suplex on me, and it looked believable. Mm -hmm. Wow! <laughs> I understand how to take a beating, and I mean, you know, a lot of times, uh, typically the heel is the veteran. But uh, you know, if I'm in a situation where I can make the heel look good. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, that match, uh, you know, in the entire match from beginning to end with Christian Ross, he only had to do two things. And two he things. came. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's that's amazing. man. I love it. Who's up now? Who's up? You're up, David, for spinning the wheel right now. You are up. <laughs> Spit it. All right. Let's throw a question out there. All right. For you. Okay. All right. Easy one. What's Roddy Piper's finisher? <laughs> Come on, David. Come on now. <laughs> you Googling again? Look at you. You turn your back. I'm looking over this way. How is it my computer behind me? Hold on. <laughs> well, is your Echo Dot behind you? <laughs> Alexa. Alexa. <laughs> yes, David. Oh. No, I well, won't have the answer in front of me. Well, all. mind you, it's a multi-part answer because uh, it, it, it depends on how he finishes. 
If he finishes with a submission, it's one finisher. If he finishes with the pin, it's a oh, different. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a but minute. Think, there's two wait finishers. Are you talking about the figure four leg lock? No. That's, <laughs> no. Oh, that's Craig of the Hammer. Ah. All right. Hammer. It's what that you're going to be hammer. doing tonight after this podcast. Sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> he does a sleeper. Yeah, the sleeper. Actually, a lot of guys really, you know, that sleeper really, you think back and looking at Ted DiBiase. Actually, that was one of Ted DiBiase's favorite finishers. Think about it. Yeah. Was the was a million the, dollar dream. Yep. Mm-hmm. A million dollar dream. I loved it. And, and at the end, the he take the money and, yeah, he uh, stuck yep. it. hundred dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. All fine. Let's spin the wheel and see where it lands, David. Here it goes. Uh, <clears throat> making it a wrap up soon, huh? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We've been having too good a time. Yes. <laughs> If this was on Saturday, I'd be like, oh, hey, all right. David, guess what? <laughs> Ten points again. <laughs> <laughs> Your fucking wheel's rigged. I'm silly. <laughs> <laughs> Your wheel's rigged. Your wheel's rigged. Your wheel's rigged. All right, you know what? Scratch that and spin it once more for me. <laughs> all right. I don't, want a free spin? I don't want 10. All right. Yeah, I'll give I'll you a free a, spin. Take... Here we go. <laughs> it's spinning. <laughs> I, I I I'm tired of that. That's a new rule. We get a free spin. How's that? <laughs> hey, I got something better for you. How about twenty points? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Ding, there ding, ding, ding. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to you guys. All right. <laughs> Finally. Finally. Twenty points. That's coming. <laughs> All right. So, so who, uh, All right. So Dave's asking me a question, right? Yes. Yes. David, oh. ask Happy a question. Okay. Um, let's go back to, let's see if you know WCW era. Let's go back to the throwback. Ooh, I love WCW era. All right. Who was just. Who was just featuring in a on a on a documentary that just oh, came out? Oh, it was a, just... this past week. This week, making a big deal, and he's an actor as well. I'll give you that. <laughs> yes. Oh man, I think. Oh wait, know. is that a trick question? Is that the David Arquette one? Ding, ding, ding. Oh, you are correct. Oh, yes. Yes. That's yes. a trick question. Dude. <laughs> yes. let, us, let us spin that wheel. <laughs> spin that wheel. Have you seen that, actually? Have, have you no, seen I that? Uh, oh, my God. It was really interesting to see. <laughs> and, and every you need to watch it. Um, I guess I guess David's luck ran off, ran off and landed on you, Happy. <laughs> So, <laughs> <Ten points>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, free spin. All right, free okay. spin. Ha- All right, free, free spin, spin for happy. Because it is happy hour. Free spin right. for happy. <laughs> yes, we're at the happy hour and a half right now. <laughs> <laughs> but have you seen that yet, Everett? I told Ooh, you about it. One shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check it out. One shot. There he goes. But yeah, but anyway, Everett, <laughs> that movie is that documentary is really good. I, I'm From, definitely gonna have to. I'm definitely gonna have to check it out there. All right. Um, okay, David, ask me a question. Ask you a question. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's mm. your turn. Ask me a question. Let's go WCW still. Okay. Like All right, let's go, brother. All right. Who was? Jim Cornette's uh, tag team that he managed. The Midnight Express. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Let me just spin that wheel. We'll spin it and we'll give you Get out Stan Lane and Bobby. <laughs> yes. 
Hey, hey, I guess it moved to me now. I got ten points. <laughs> okay, Everett. Guess what? Since you're the host, you're the host of the draft day. You get to spin the wheel for free. Right, here we go. <laughs> God, we're stupid. <laughs> As Forrest, as Forrest Gump would say, right? Oh my! Are you freaking crapping me ten points again, David? What the hell? <laughs> okay, you know what, Everett? You're the host. Spin it again. All right, we're gonna I was... let you have two two spins in a row. We're gonna give you. A, we're gonna right, yeah. right, happy. We're gonna we're deactivating the ten point yes. slot. <laughs> Guess what? Ding, 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 oh ding, ding. yes! Here we go. <laughs> one shot. We got one shot. One <laughs> shot to kill. <laughs> and what did it land on? Let's see what it lands on. Yeah. Mm, he a little excitement here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Jump into a slam <laughs> <laughs> Snap into a Slim Jim heel. All right. Ten Happen. for every. <laughs> <laughs> what did it land on? It landed. I did one shot. That's it. All right. You want to spin? <clears throat> you want me to spin the wheel? Spin it. All right. Let's Forgot. spin it. Here we go. All right. Do where the lands. <laughs> Here it goes. Here she goes. Round she goes and where nobody Ooh, knows. One shot. There you go. There you go. One shot. One shot. <laughs> Cheers. <Yes. laughs> Cheers to happy. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. One shot for happy. <laughs> oh, he has to drink. He has to drink. Hold on. All right. Mm-hmm. He had a slow delay on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! All right, now, all right, happy. You want a free spin? Sure. All right, let's okay. give you a free spin here. Let's see. Free what spin. Free spin. Free spin. <laughs> all right. Here Premium there. spin. <laughs> there she goes. Where nobody knows. <laughs> Magic eight ball. What do you say? <laughs> two shots. <laughs> oh. You're Mr. Two shots tonight, man. <laughs> two shots. That's all right. At least I'm not Edward Forty Hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Who's that? Explain that one. Explain that oh. one. Oh, you, you guys have never played Edward Forty Hands before? No. Mind you, I don't know if this was just a testament to my own age, but like back in college, uh, 25 plus years ago, uh, basically what you do, you do uh, duct tape 40 ounces, you duct tape 40s to a person's hands. Oh and his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that sounds, that sounds great. Don't give Everett <laughs> ideas. Stop it, Everett. <laughs> Hey Chris, Russell, I feel like what you doing that, this week? You have an Edward Forty Hands match. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, that I'm would be it. something. That'd be something. There. Clap him. <laughs> <laughs> we get the ring off. Oh my God, an Edward Forty Hands cage match. That would be hilarious. <laughs> oh God. Oh damn. All right, to- now. Let's uh, let's wrap it up for soon. However, yeah. All right, David, you want to spin? I'm gonna spin. All right, I'll take the spin. All right, you're gonna spin. All right, let's go ahead and go to the wheel. The magic stone gold save Alston wheel. Here we go. There, here he goes. Oh, one shot. <laughs> <laughs> on for the road. <laughs> All right. You want your second free spin? Why not? All right. Give it to me. Give it to you. There it goes. The wheel is spinning. 
It is spinning. This could be funny watching this back on the playback. Well, here, I, while we're at it, I'm going to ask one more trivia question to the peanut gallery out there. Uh, so who was the first Money in the Bank winner to not get to cash in his Money in the Bank? Oh, I know this mm. one. <laughs> <laughs> I know this one. Take it, Everett. Damien Sandow. Mr. Canada. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Refre refresh my mind about that one there. He, who was it that he went up against? No, what happened was he never got to cash. He lost his money in the bank in a match to Edge, and Edge cashed it. That's yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he, yeah, they, from what I understand, the stuff behind the scenes, I guess he did something or said something about Orton. And so they pretty much took that opportunity away from him, man. Um, right. Well, they buried him and then he went on to TNA. Yeah. Yeah, is uh, Mr. Anderson. Anderson. Yes. Anderson. Anderson. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. <laughs> David, you won 20 points. So pretty much, David, with your 10 points, didn't you get 50 points, David? I guess so. Yeah, you got 50. Then you got 60, 70, and then 80, another 10 points, and then 90. You won, David. <laughs> you got 100 points. The first time. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> but you know what, Everett? Draft day spin guess the wheel. What? <laughs> but guess what, Everett? What? You, you know what? Everybody's a winner on the draft day with happy hour. How's that? Exactly. Absolutely. It's you always a party we have around, no yes. matter how stupid we are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, I'll, I'll definitely that. drink Let's that just, there. Let's, that's it. What do you think? We close it out, Everett? After this, swing. yeah, because we all I know we all pretty much have work. We've been going yes, on for about an hour, hour 27. That's enough time right there. We'll spin the last, we'll spin the last. I said, spin. Yeah, let's do a trivia. I've been saying, spin do a trivia. too much this, tonight. Just we'll, spin. <laughs> we'll spin the last minute, couple minutes there, plug in our stuff, mm -hmm. and then we'll sign off here. So let's go with. Happy. Let's yep. uh, go with you right now. Any upcoming events and uh, where can people find me on social media to keep up with you? Everywhere. On Facebook, you can find me at Wrestler Happy Hour. On Twitter, you can find me at Wrestler Happy Hour. On Instagram, you can find me at Wrestler Happy Hour. Um, so uh, you can find me there. Uh, also, uh, stay tuned for some key announcements coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, with regards to you know, me and Pittsburgh, it's a very, very relevant announcement. But as far as wrestling is concerned, uh, the only, believe it or not, in 2020, the only shows that Happy Hour has been on has been Intergender Bonanza. I was at IGB5. I'm on IGB6. You will see me at IGB7. So, uh, yes, uh, all of that is to come. I don't know if IGB7 is going to be at the end of this year or in the uh, beginning of 2021, but yeah, they're forcing, I will they're be forcing it. IGB7. I, IG7. <laughs> nice, nice. David C. Russell, Mr. Deathmatch Russell Podcast. We're yeah, well, Everett. You, well, you can find me tomorrow night, actually, with my guest of uh, Chicagoland Wrestling on Friday night at 8 p.m. with Chicagoland Wrestling promoter, owner, John Bullard, and he will be on my podcast. We're going to be talking about Chicagoland Wrestling and see what they're all about at 8 p.m. on Facebook Live on the Death Bench Russell Podcast on Facebook Live. You catch that, uh, you know, on all my social medias as, as normal, uh, DJ Dave. Uh, on Facebook, uh, DJ Dave 32, NJ 32, and uh, Twitter. Usually, you can catch me at what, uh, you know, at D David NJ 36, 32, and on um, Instagram, as always, at uh, David NJ 36, and on my website, Death Match Russell Podcast. And Stay tuned because there's so much coming up in the works. I got a lot of podcasts, and I want to have this guy back on my podcast. He's more than welcome to come back on as well. And I'm sure you'll have him on again as well, Everett. And 
That's it. Thank you, gentlemen, for playing Draft Day. Spin the As Wheel we... Edition. Podcasting Network, your top source for independent podcasting. Head over to podcasting.net. Follow them on social media, Podcasting Network on Facebook, Twitter at Podcasting Net. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Podcasting Network, and on Twitch, backslash Podcast City Network. Podcast City Network. Be creative, be independent, be yourself. When I need a logo or graphic design done, I use Three Count Design. Three Count Design offers a wide range of graphic design products, video photography, and other forms of media. Everything from t shirt designs to websites. For more information, head over to Facebook.com slash Three Count Design. That is Facebook.com slash Three Count Design. When I want to kick back a few cold ones with my friends, I head over to City Limits Tap Room. City Limits Tap Room has a wide selection of TVs to watch your favorite sports, indoor and outdoor seating. They are pet friendly. City Limits Tap Room also has food made fresh to order, and the grilled cheese is excellent. I recommend the grilled cheese and the apple pie cider. The fries on the side, can't go wrong with that, baby. More information for upcoming events, head over to facebook.com slash city limits tap room. And there you have it. Draft day, spin the wheel edition. I want to thank Happy Hour for coming back on and David C. Russell, Deathmatch Russell podcast. And you can follow more of Deathmatch Russell podcast over on podcastcity.net and on his social media on Facebook, Deathmatch Russell podcast and more happy hour over on his facebook page wrestler happy hour hopefully we'll do another draft day we don't know time will tell ever lee signing off have a good day night weekend see you again next time for another episode of the Everett lee show 